Do you like doing this? As far as turning these big blanks? You know, it's one of those things where it's like, I like doing it every so often. Yeah. I wouldn't want to do it every single day. No, I can see There's that. There's still like that whole danger factor. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Hi, I'm Ashley Harwood. And in this video, I'm going to share with you how I tackle this gigantic table pedestal turning. Now, as y'all might know, I have done turnings this large before. However, this is the first time that I get to tackle a project like this with a local furniture maker. So let's get started. So we're here with Robert Buxton of Holy City Reclaimed. And can you tell me a little bit about this project and kind of how it came about and where the design came from? Um, came from Luann McCants, Lu Luann McCants Interiors. Um, she contacted me, I guess about a month ago, a month and a half ago, about this table. I had a good picture of it and worked out the design. So it'll be a natural walnut base that Ashley's gonna turn. And then the top will be a bleached walnut top. Mm -hmm. um, so we're in a house in Mount Pleasant and I um, kind of just worked back and forth with her on the design. Mm -hmm. I contacted you about it and you were gracious enough to do this for me. <laughs> and walk me through the process of how this all goes together because I've never done a big turn pedestal. So yeah. it's, been a, it's definitely been an education. Can you tell me a little bit about how, how you've been assembling this blank and putting these pieces together? So this all came out as rough eight quarter walnut, um, came from Worth. Mm -hmm. um, and cut it down to size, ran through the joiner, ran through the planer, got it milled down, um, and then been gluing them up. Mm -hmm. And once they're glued up, I've got them glued into four and a half by nine inch right now. Um, they'll end up getting all into nine by nines. There'll be four nine by nines, which will then which all get glued together into an 18 by 18, mm -hmm. 200 and some odd pound plane. <laughs> I will somehow or another muscle over to you and uh -huh. be impressed when I see you get it mounted on the machine to turn. <laughs> really couldn't think anybody else I'd want to trust this with because it's, you know, it's not a, it's not a cheap blank. It's got 16 hours in it and about $600 of material. So I don't want to <laughs> take it to some random guy down the street and see what he can do with it. Um, I've seen what she's produced and it's, it's impressive. It's very impressive. Thank you. You're welcome. So there's a lot that goes into putting together a blank like this. This one was made in four quarters and then the quarters were glued together. It probably weighs like somewhere in the range of 250 to 300 pounds. Because it's so heavy and cumbersome, we are going to lift it up using the engine hoist. That's also the safest bet so that everybody's standing at a safe distance when this thing gets lifted up in the air. I asked Robert to route out a recess so that my faceplate can actually be set into the piece a little bit at the end. Um, and then he was kind enough to go ahead and screw it in for me.
The full swing on my lathe is about 23 and a half inches. I really need to get this down to about 23 inches before I can turn it. And the distance from corner to corner is more than that. So I need to take some time with this handheld planer to take those corners down. I'd like to take a moment to thank this video's sponsor, Audible. Audible, in case you haven't heard, is this gigantic collection of audio books, audio shows, news and comedy that you can listen to through your phone, Alexa, or Bluetooth. Now, I spend an awful lot of hours on production work right here at The Lathe, and some of it can get kind of repetitive. So Audible is perfect to help me pass the time and keep my mind engaged. It's also great for listening to while you're on the go, at the gym, or traveling. Some recent titles I've been enjoying are The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg, Un Yourself by Gary John Bishop, which is helping me to move past some self-imposed limitations, and Becoming by Michelle Obama. Go to audible.com slash Ashley Harwood or text Ashley Harwood to 500, 500 and get three months of Audible for $6.95 a month. Choose one audio book and two Audible originals absolutely free. That's less than half of the regular price and this is for a limited time only. I'm running into some issues here when I start to turn a piece this big. Um, part of it is that when I spin the piece around, you can see that my banjo on my lathe can't get underneath it. So um, I'm not going to be able to get all the way over here until I get this further down to round. So for the time being, I'm going to have to use this freestanding tool rest that's actually a part of this Oliver lathe over here. Now, this freestanding tool rest is actually a really nice one. It's super heavy. It's cast iron. It's wonderful. The only problem here is that when I set my tool rest in here and I get it far enough in there that I can tighten it down, it's actually too low. You can see it's well below the center point of the piece of wood that I need to turn. So this tool post won't allow me to get up to where I need to be. Um, this is set for the same height as the Oliver. It's not set for the height that my Vic Mark is at right now. My Vic Mark is actually raised up a little bit high for me because I have to be able to get the engine hoist underneath. So you see there's um, one thing leads to the next and leads to the next. So, Robust Tools was nice enough to send me this custom tool rest with a longer post where I can now reach all of the height that I need to with this freestanding tool rest. As an added safety precaution, I'm going to put several layers of this gaffer's tape on the outside of the piece just in case it were to start to come apart. And this will keep that from gaining any momentum if that were to happen. It's just an extra safety step.
I'm using these calipers on the outside of the piece to measure the size and make sure it matches the drawing. I'm waiting on Robert to come by today to pick up the blank and uh, we'll get to see his first reactions when he sees it. Now, after he takes it, then it's on its way to becoming a table. Um, it's going to be out of my hands at that point. watching everybody and don't forget you can follow Robert on Instagram at Holy City Reclaimed. Till next time. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in any of the tools that I'm using during the video, you can check them out on my website, ashleyharwood.com. If you enjoyed the video, I hope that you will consider subscribing. Thank you so much. See you next time.